Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome back. Today I have a brand new tutorial using the beautiful new collection from Prima Marketing, Georgia Blues. It is such a beautiful collection. I love, love, love the blue colors and I was just so excited to use it that I immediately got to work and created this layout using a picture of my daughter with a horse. I used lots of flowers and other embellishments to embellish around the photo. Here are some of the products that come with the collection. There's a 3x4 journal cards, then I also got a 6x6 paper pad, some chipboard pieces which I love and I want to use for this layout. Then there's also some stamps and the stamps come with a small stencil, I think it's 4x4. Four and it also comes with satin crystals and there's a lot, there's an 8x8 paper pad that I don't have, there is a A4 paper pad and the 12x12 paper pad which is the one I'm going to show you today and I'm just going to go through all the different pages. The first page is definitely my favorite and I'm going to use it in this layout. I will use parts of it, not all of it, and the back of it is really nice and plain which is beautiful to create any layout on top. Then there's this wood grain flowery paper and a lot of foiled papers. So there's papers that have little gold foil on them, which are beautiful. There's a lot of shabby chic images with flowers and birds and butterflies and just really, really beautiful. So I love this collection. Every single page is more gorgeous than the other. And it looks also vintage. Some of the pages have like really nice vintage stamping or designs on them. And you can use also these because they have like cards and stuff like that. So to show you a little bit of the flowers, I have a few packs of flowers that match the collection. There's also some butterflies. One of the flower packs has a stencil, which is really cool. And I'm going to use that stencil as well in my layout. So I love the new designs of the flowers. We have this really nice vellum paper inside of them. So you can use those as well for your projects. And on top of it, some of them come with the stencils, which is really, really nice. So I'm really excited to just work with this collection. It's just so, so beautiful. And I'm going to get started. I picked a couple of pages, one of them for the background, which is this one with a little bit of gold foil on the outside. And of course, my favorite with the blue, because I really wanted to incorporate some of that bluish color with the gold. And the one with that is my favorite also has gold foiling on it. It's almost like a script foil and it looks beautiful on. I preferred using a plain background so that's why I took the blue paper and I just ripped it in half and I just used part of it to line up at the top of my layout. So it would give movement from top to bottom. I use about a third of the paper for this and I ripped it in a way that the white would show, the white rip would show in the paper. You can always test it and see how it does, if it shows or not. I like it when it shows that ripped area. And all I did is just glued it to one side, to the right side of my layout. I really wanted to have a plain background because that would help to bring in some white space. You can't have such a busy page because it's really hard for the eye to go into different areas of the layout if you have such a busy pattern. I grabbed a small brick stencil from the flower pack and then using some Prima Fenaber paper paste and my silicone brush, I started adding it to the edges of the blue paper. Not everywhere and very randomly. So I didn't want to cover all of it. I just wanted it to look distressed and make it look as it's a brick wall coming out of the page. So I went around and added it to different places on both sides of the paper. The trick to getting it uneven is to make sure you don't cover the whole stencil. So only add it in certain areas, usually thicker in the middle and then thinner as it goes up and down the stencil. You can move the stencil around from one area to the other. It might, it might muck up the paste a little bit. And if you don't want that to happen, then you can wash your stencil in between applications. I do not do that because I like the distressed look and that's okay with me. But if really, you really don't like it, you can do that, of course. And you can move the stencil around to extend the brick area towards the different areas. So in the middle, I wanted to extend the brick towards the center left. 
So that's why I moved the stencil that way as well. I heat set the paste really well and then I grabbed a few journaling cards from the journal pad and I wanted to use them as framing for my photo. I printed a 2x3 photo in my sprocket which is just one of the printers that I use and I knew that it would fit perfectly into one of these journaling cards. However, I wanted to cut them up and kind of staple them around to create a layered background, a layered frame for my picture and mat it all up. So it's really easy. I just gather a few of the papers, cut them up if I need to, and then staple them. I learned this trick for one of my crafty friends, Rika, and she taught me how to do this and I found it really helpful when you want to create a quick frame. A quick way to know if you've created enough layers or if it looks balanced is to actually bring your photo into the stack every time you want to add a new paper. That way you see if it looks proper with the photo there. Don't stick the photo until you actually have the whole stack already stapled. I placed the mat in the place where I wanted it on the layout and the photo on top. I still haven't glued the photo yet because I wanted to add an extra element underneath the photo which is a chipboard piece that really matched this perfectly. It was time also to start embellishing with all the flowers. So I started placing flowers where I wanted them to be because that really helped kind of see how, how the layout would come about. So layout composition is really important and I like it when it's balanced and the photo is the main thing that the eye sees once you look at the layout. So it's really easy to just add all these elements and I'm gluing some of the elements onto the background that way they don't move afterwards. Although I wanted to add the flowers I knew that I wanted to also add other elements as well. So I raise the chipboard a little bit with some foam tape and that really helped to be able to tuck in some flowers in different areas. I usually, in terms of flowers, I usually like to put the largest flowers towards the photo because they tend to anchor the photo and then the smaller flowers tend to go away from the photo. That creates movement and balance in the composition. And I do have to play around with flowers until I am happy with the results. A good tip to have when you're using flowers is good to have flowers from different sizes, some big ones, some medium ones, and some small ones, and even some very tiny ones, because that really helps to create a really nice flower arrangement. Imagine if you were doing a vase and you would arrange some flowers in it. You would have flowers in different colors and different sizes and the same thing goes with for a layout. So I tend to have different colors and different sizes and I don't add too too many colors because I like monochromatic layouts but if you do like other colors then it definitely add them as well. I like adding similar colored flowers in different sides of the photo so it balances the layout and the eye focuses directly on the photo. That's a good tip to have when you're adding different flowers, especially if they're different sizes. My layouts have lots of volume, but they still fit into an album. And I love using foam tape to raise different elements in the background, especially the photo. It stands out the most out of the layout. So that's what I did here. I used some foam tape to just add it to my photo. I cut the other ripped up strip from the blue paper because I felt like the layout wasn't balanced enough and I added it on the other side of the layout, on the left side. I trimmed it a little bit and then I added it and I flushed it straight to the edge of the left side. That way it would really balance all the blue on the right side of the page. I glued this paper and then I fussy cut a small element and also added it to the edge to finish up the movement going from right to left. And since that little piece had a bird on it, I decided to take one of the chipboard birds and add it to the other side. And that really worked out well. I also added a small title. This is from the Santorini collection because I really didn't have one that matched perfectly for this. I went ahead and added some Satan Crystal blue beads these are just beautiful crystals and I always find that they add beautiful touch to the layouts. 
and it's really nice to put them in different places that way they really add a little bit more texture to them as well one of my favorite things to do to ask to add soft texture to any layout is to actually put some cheesecloth in between the flowers I love fraying the cheesecloth and making little wisps out of it. It gives it such a soft look to any layout. So I just tuck it in between the different flowers and embellishments to really give that extra texture. Then I took the paper texture again and the brick stencil and I added some texture on the opposite side of the layout. This is really important because it really helped balance everything out. It looked too blue otherwise and it didn't match the rest of the layout. That way I could still get those beautiful blue elements but it matched the center underneath the photo. Then I took the extra texture paste that I had and I added some of it on the rims of all the flowers to add some really nice white texture on each flower. That really helps tie in the layout and makes everything stand out. It almost leaves highlights on top of the flowers and makes it match the rest of the paper. Finally, I also wanted to add a few golden elements in the middle of the layout. So I took the tea stain color boom spray and added some splatters to the background. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends on social media. For more inspiration, visit the Prima Marketing blog and my blog, karentamir.com to find more inspiration and more projects. Thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day. Bye.